Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, this is kind of an epic interview, not for the reasons that Don Lemons <laughs> wishes it was. You know, I'm in, I'm in the editing process. I'm almost done editing this thing. I won't get this up till Wednesday, March 19th, um, because it's so long. And it really shows how low consciousness and dumb Don Lemons is. And Elon Musk is explaining things to him over and over again like he's a child and he just doesn't get it most of it's in one way or another about elon musk censoring his platform like don lemon's questions all come back to that and elon musk explains it to him so many different ways and unless you watch you know i edited out a lot of the interview and i didn't watch all of it myself uh, but if you see the you know this is a long video but to me it's worth watching because it really just, it's almost like something you would put in a time capsule. And, you know, my commentary might add something to it as well here. Because it just shows you everything that's going on. And, you know, Don Lemons, who's been censored, and Don Lemons, who talks about being oppressed as a gay man and a black man, is anti-conspiracy theory, right? Now, if you are aware of the horrors of slavery and you talk about the system and how it's mistreated people, then why wouldn't you believe every conspiracy theory out there is at least possible because of the evil that we know that people have done in the past, right? If you're a person that believes that your people have suffered from oppression or believe any people have suffered from oppression, then you have to believe that human beings are capable of anything, right? So Don Lemon has these contradictory points of view where he feels like he's been victimized in some way. And he's a victim, and yet he believes everything the mainstream media tells him, right? <laughs> and Elon Musk is trying to explain, like, this simple, you know, what Elon Musk is a, a little bit of a slightly of a truther, or, you know, whatever he is, right? I mean, he sucks, and, you know, I get into him being more of a supervillain than Don Lemons is, potential supervillain. But, you know, he's at least understand some of these things. He can explain them. And, and Don Lemons, there's this moment where Don Lemons is looking really confused. I just showed it to my wife and we were laughing hilariously towards the end of this thing. But to me, the whole thing's worth watching because you get to see how hard it is to talk to somebody who is just a sheeple as much as you could sheeple, right? <laughs> He's sheepling as much as he could sheeple, right? The sheeple ain't sheepling. But anyways, um, let's get into it here. Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, I want to remind people, it would be helpful for me if you guys would subscribe to a new channel. It's a backup channel for me that's on a separate account called Exposing the Heartfulness Called Dodgy Scam, scam spelled with a dollar sign. I've put it in the default um, uploads. So if you look at the, the description box below any of my videos, you can find the link. I'm only 300 and something subscribers away from being able to monetize the channel. And then it'll become a backup channel. I might change the name in the future. It's on a different account, like I said. So it would benefit all of us for people to subscribe to it in case something happened to my normal channel. You could still find my content. And it'd be also monetized. So that would all be a good thing for any of you guys who watch my content regularly. Um, again, it's in the description box any of these videos. So I started watching the Don Lemon, Elon Musk interview. And, you know, Don Lemon, who is a deceptive person, we'll get into this thing here in a moment. It's time stamped there. And this is something from somebody else. Um, Elon, let's do a show. Okay, I want a cyber truck, billions of dollars, and a piece of everything you own. Why do you hate free speech? And he starts crying. And so... um. <laughs> There he is there. Now, they're making it sound like he was angry, but I looked at the news coverage, which I'll show you in a moment. It doesn't appear he was angry at all. Um, let me go to the uh, Don Lemon's channel here. So remember when Don Lemon said this? Hi, everyone. Elon Musk is mad at me. And I just put out a statement about what happened between him, me, and the interview that he is apparently so upset about. But Okay, so... I watched most of the interview. I'm halfway through it, and I'm going to cover some of the rest of it with you all. 
and he gets a little bit annoyed with Don Lemon. Annoyed, not angry, not furious, not mad. And, you know, it's about Don Lemon's goofy questioning. And so he sat, he sat down with Don Lemon for an hour, and I think he's relatively calm for somebody sitting with Don Lemon for, for an hour <laughs> and talking to him because Don Lemon just sucks. And so it's more than likely that Elon Musk realized, because he didn't know who Don Lemon was before, he realized he sucks, right? Let's go to the you know media coverage of this. before we sh I'll show you the rest of the interview. So when I searched Don Lemon Twitter, um, Don Lemon loses Twitter con contract after Elon Musk interview. Elon Musk don dumps Don Lemon. Don Lemon interview. Uh, Elon Musk addresses Twitter hate speech, these things, right? And um, it doesn't say much in terms of Elon Musk getting mad. Nobody saw that because it doesn't exist in the interview. Watch the Elon Musk interview. Don Lemon grills Elon Musk about drug use, hate speech, and X, and his meeting with Donald Trump. In this contentious interview, it's not contentious. Elon Musk is, it seems to be in pretty good mood, at least for the first half. Don Lemon tells all, CNN, Nikki Haley is battle with Elon Musk and who you won't see on his new show. Anybody with self-respect. <laughs> Don Lemon could get a huge payout from Elon Musk. And then this one, Don Lemon, let's go to these here. This is from the New York Post. Don Lemon demanded Tesla Cybertruck $5 million advance, equ advance equity in X before Elon Musk canned him, sources say. And so when Elon Musk gets mad at Don Lemon, it's not bad, annoyed, is Don Lemon is basically saying you're running your company into the ground. And why would he want a cyber truck and equity at X if he thinks Elon Musk is doing a bad job? And so this is what they're hearing is that he wanted $5 million up front on top of an $8 million salary and a cyber truck and, you know, some sort of um, stock options in, tw in Twitter and X. And Don Lemon sucks, right? And Elon Musk during this interview, probably realized early on that Don Lemon sucks. It says here, Don Lemon could get a huge payout from Elon Musk. Um, well, you know, CNN had to pay John Lemon $24 million to fire him for the privilege of firing him, which enraged his former fellow CNN employees. And he just absolutely sucks, right? And so <laughs> that's classic Lemons, like trying to get a job and then get fired from the job and get a payout for sucking. That's lem that's Lemon's good. Uh, that's Lemon's go-to go move. Okay, so um, he's talking about the Great Replacement theory, which Elon Musk says he doesn't subscribe to. Elon Musk then talks about how he believes that the Democrats um, are letting uh, illegal aliens and people who are not American citizens illegally into America so that they will eventually vote for Democrats, which of course they will because the Democrats are better for illegal aliens than Donald Trump is, right? They're better, their immigration policies are better. Everybody knows that. And, he, and Don Lemon's just, just goofy about that. Uh, I'm not gonna show you that. Well, let me show you that in the beginning here. On the X platform was because I thought maybe this is something that could help other people. That's why I mentioned it, yeah. That's the catamine use, right? Elon Musk says he only uses catamine once every two weeks. He works 16 hour days and he doesn't take, he works seven days a week most weeks. And he only takes it when he gets, you know, whatever depression he has. And he takes a minimal amount because if he took too much, he wouldn't be able to function. Don Lemon asks multiple follow up questions that, you know, they're just irrelevant after he said that. And he talked about you need a prescription. He doesn't, you know, he's not saying. You know, all these things, right? His recommending on Twitter. Like Don Lemon saying that's bad, and Elon Musk explains it, and then move on. There's nothing there, right? Can we talk about the Great Replacement Theory now? Um, some of the things that you post, the Great Replacement Theory, you claim that Democrats, President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border, you said that they're, the president is getting, and Democrats are doing it, to get more votes. Um, but undocumented immigrants cannot vote in federal elections, so how is that possible? <laughs> okay, it's like I said, everybody knows that the immigrants coming here illegally are going to favor Democrats, and they're going to remember Democratic Party 
being the party that supports them as a group like different groups you know it's just like saying um why do rich white people want to be republicans why do rural people white rural people want to be republicans because they think the republican party and donald trump better represents their demographic right and so it's just it's silly that don lemon is even asking that question right um well you're conflating two things one is great replacement theory uh the other is which i i don't subscribe to that i'm simply saying that there is an incentive here uh if uh legal okay so he says he doesn't subscribe to the great replacement theory Don Lemon asks him four more, four more questions about the Great Replacement Theory, or mentions it multiple times, which would get annoying after a while because he's already said that he has a different views that might sound similar to some of the things in the Great Replacement Theory, but he doesn't subscribe to that. And then he gets into it here. It was fundamental uh, that uh, for, for the Democrat, Democrat Party to foster and, and usher in a large number of illegals. Yeah. And, they, and, and, and you don't need a conspiracy in that case because you have a very basic incentive. You could say I'm wrong about that incentive, but that's my view. I, I'm not buying into I didn't, I, buying some great replacement theory. I'm simply saying there appears to be... Again, so he says it again there. Simply saying there appears to be a very clear incentive for uh, uh, Democrats to have to maximize the number of illegals um, because it helps them win elections. I'm talking about the great replacement theory is also part of a Jewish conspiracy theory. Okay. Where are you going with this, Don? And when you did the tweet or you responded to the tweet about that, you... And okay, Jewish communities have been pushing the, this exact kind of diabolical hatred against whites that they claim to want white people to stop using against them. I'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest poop now about Western Jewish populations coming to the disturbing I don't know the X stuff um, end up apologizing and which I think is you know it's good that you end up apologizing you went to Auschwitz with Ben Shapiro yeah so he gave him a little look of like oh my god you suck so bad that's not a look of this interview you're killing it it's like a frustration look let's watch the look again here um, go back a few seconds here the theory and when you you did the tweet or you responded to the tweet about that you ended up apologizing and which i think is you know it's good that you ended up apologizing you went to auschwitz <laughs> that's like a, a teenage girl look they give when their dad sucks and just like just doesn't get it right <laughs> that's not oh my god you're killing me in this interview my god you're such a great journalist i'm not going to support you you're destroying me you know the way don lemon is phrasing this oh elon mess is mad at me no, Elon Musk just realized how bad you sucked on something that I've known for years. With Ben Shapiro? Yeah. So you said you learned your lesson. What did you learn? I said I learned my lesson. You said you learned your lesson when, it, when you apologized and you said... Okay, so Don, you don't have a quote there. When did he say he learned his lesson? So that's not an interview. Like, you're professional journalism. You can't say, you know, he, that's how I took what you said. You got to quote him and read the quote back to him. You have his quote here because it didn't say anything in the tweet about that. Of course, that tweet was the, the reason he had to, you know, backtrack. You said you went to Auschwitz. You saw what what? No, I was already already aware of of, of these things. And the nature of my comment that that really inflamed people. Um, what I was what I was trying to say, and I did very quickly clarify. This is what I'm saying: is that uh, um, a number of. Uh, prominent uh, Jewish philanthropists fund uh, groups that they should really take a closer look at funding because some of the, some of the groups they fund, um, I think, are anti-Semitic. Yeah. Do you understand the connection between the two? There one, there's a connection between you said Democrats, a great replacement theory, but when it comes to the actual great replacement theory. He didn't say great replacement theory. Replacement theory. Originally it was started about Jewish people, as you said, flooding in the country, and then now people are using it for Democrats, saying the same thing about Democrats. Flooding. Oh, my no, there's only like one percent of the country is jewish people they say this about every immigration group of immigrants you know you can watch it like when they started bringing chinese in in california and the irish and the other immigrants that were already doing that labor were at war just with the, the italians and the irish right i'm both irish and italian and there was there was some kind of conflict between irish and italian because they were 
fighting for the same jobs. You have that with any, any immigrant population and this idea that we're, trying, we're being replaced by a cheaper labor. And it works because immigrants are better workers because they're more hungry than entitled Americans. So I was talking to this person, a young man from China, I don't know when it was, a while back. And I was saying, you know, there's all these jobs given to Indians. You know, I know a lot of Indians in America, you know, Indians, Indians from India because of the meditation I do. And other, you know, people from Asia that are hired to do tech jobs and high level, you know, engineering jobs and things like that. And I said, you know, why why is America hire these people from other countries? And he said, because American kids don't like to do math, right? Which is fairly accurate. American kids are spoiled and entitled, even ones that come from these countries, and they don't have the hunger and thirst they that they do when they come from impoverished countries. And there isn't, you know, when you're just entitled to something and you just think that's the way life is, and you don't value it where these other people from foreign countries do. That's why they work harder, people from other countries, right? This is just fact. But it is this idea of being replaced, right? (laughs) Because people in America are losing their jobs to people from foreign countries, whatever that means, right? That's actually happening. I don't believe in the great replacement theory. I don't care about any of these things. I'm not a Republican, but that actually happens. It's happened in various countries for centuries that when they have people who are will work harder for less money because they come from a worse country, then they bring those people in. And it's happened for every successful empire where the people who live in the empire stopped, stop having any kind of work ethic because they grow up weak and entitled like American kids do, right? Here it's a simple matter of incentives. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I actually don't see an incentive for... Uh, Jewish people to want to have to get legal immigration. I don't. I don't think there is such an incentive. Yeah. The Great Replacement Theory is a, a neo-Nazi trope. It's in the neo-Nazi manifesto. You're still talking about this, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's in the Turner Diaries. It's referenced by the Buffalo mass shooter uh, in his manifesto, where ten people, um, black people, were murdered in Buffalo. His actual title is a Christchurch shooter's manifesto. Fifty-one people in the Muslim mosque were murdered. Twenty-three people. Uh, murdered in El Paso by a shooter who used the same language that you use in that manifesto when you say Hispanic invasion. Is that not... I didn't say Hispanic invasion. And you tweeted, you quoted a tweet that said, that called it a Hispanic invasion. You just said the same language you use. That's slander, Don. First you said the same language that you use, and then you said, well, you, you liked a tweet or you reposted a tweet with that language. And that's a big difference, Don, right? <laughs> You irresponsible, horrible journalist. If I quote something, it doesn't mean I agree with anything every image. It's just something that I want. I think this is something worth. Of course, that geez, Don sucks so bad. Like he thinks he's got him, but he doesn't. He's he's ill prepared. You know, Elon Musk for a lot of sucky things that he does. So, if I was to look at it in terms of who is more of a supervillain, it's Elon Musk. <laughs> Like, Don Levin is a supervillain. He's just somebody who's annoying, who sucks at his job, who's kind of an embarrassment to humanity. And, you know, he's Don Lemon, right? He's kind of douchey, and he's unlikable. But Elon Musk is, I mean, I think they said he had like 180 IQ or something like that. I saw in some documentary, maybe that's wrong, but whatever. He's got a genius-level IQ. And he has done some positive things that are... You know, you could consider some parts of his things positive. But in terms of the things that I think he's done that's positive is he's opened up Twitter X as a platform that allows more freedom of speech and an underrepresentative, an underrepresented hunted demographic and truthers and right wing people. And I'm not a right wing people person and I don't like the right wing people, but they're being deplatformed and censored everywhere else. And so for that, he's done a good job. He has allowed for different points of view on X that other platforms don't allow you to, to post, right? And in that, he has, you know, ways to make money and things like this through um, this platform where, you know, these other platforms, you, you know, you, you don't have those advantages. They, you, they demonetize you or whatever else, right? That's good. But in terms of the satellite he's putting up, you know, one of the 
the ideas and the the spiritual um you know the spiritual practice that I do is of electromagnetic pollution being the worst pi- kind that disrupts your subtle bodies your energetic bi- bodies the Wi-Fi and the 5G and the 4G and all these things that are out there all this electromagnetic frequencies that NASA itself called you're being bombarded by you know I've covered this in various videos and then of course the genetic tampering and things he's doing a lot of these things could have disastrous results like Elon Musk can do real damage and this idea of more and more satellites for internet you know that itself is disrupting and and difficult uh, on not just people but the environment it's contaminating the environment and you know on a subtle level electromagnetic level and our planet's being choked out by all these satellites that are just you know it's just too much stuff in our atmosphere and so all this stuff could do real damage Don Lemon doesn't have the advantage or the ability to do real damage because he just can suck on TV or now on the internet right but in terms of this interview Elon Musk is more appealing because he gives reasonable answers he's smart and he has you know his opinions and Don Lemon is just sucking like despite you know his being basically harmless because he's Don Lemon Don Lemon is hard to root for or hard to agree with because he just sucks across the board people should uh, consider why would you quote something that you didn't believe because anything I quote is going to have a whole range of statements doesn't mean I agree with everything in it do you think if okay so why would you need him to answer that right like do you do you believe every word that's said when you post something on social media this is the whole Kyrie Irving thing right there if if you moderated yourself more if there was better content moderation on the platform that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great great replacement theory as it relates I don't have to answer these questions great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people do you think that I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otherwise, I would not do this interview. So you don't think, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for it? Get in trouble. By who? (laughs) Get in trouble? (laughs) Who's going to get him in trouble? Who do do you get in trouble, Elon, right? This whole idea of people being able to, you know, cancel people, all this stuff. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. I got you in trouble. You know, people commenting on the internet. Oh, you're in trouble. Oh, you did this thing wrong. Right? It's just so petty and and, and immature and just all of it. You know, everyone's only really answerable to God, you know, the soul within them. There are reactions that happen from other people that you can take as being something from the divine, right? Any reaction, anything that happens in your life, you can say is a part of a plan to let you know something in a way that God can give you feedback. But we all are only answerable to God. You know, I mock people all the time. And I, you know, sometimes call people even evil. And, you know, and believe it uh, to some extent. But it's very light on my part. Because I know that my viewpoint and all of our viewpoint is limited to our biological cages, our bodies, and the third dimensional reality. Because... God does destructive work and sometimes higher developed souls come down and play a destructive being, someone that well, you might call a villain, but it's a higher developed soul doing God's work by playing that role. You understand this? So you really can't, you could say someone is a villain in terms of our limited perspective and is doing evil, but that person might be doing divine work. It might be a higher developed soul that's here that bringing about destruction of something that God, you know, the divine plan wants to be destroyed, right? And that's why I'm light about things because we're all all only answerable to God. And, you know, I do okay work and I work and do service for God and, you know, I do my own spiritual practice, but I could do better, you know, like I, like I, you know, I give it the old college try now and again and, you know, I mean, I'm kind of a slacker, but I, I could do better. We all could. And so even though I make fun of people and I do this stuff, it's not my business. You know, I wouldn't want to be a part of the judging system to decide who is, you know, who gets punished here or that because, you know, I know I'm limited to my own personal 
um, whatever it is. And there's too many people that believe that they get to judge other people on their own emotional immaturity and their psychological deprivation and their, you know, all of it. And just whining on the internet and all this thing that people do. Oh, you said this. Oh, your beliefs? Like, I don't get into other people's beliefs. I just don't get into it. Like, I leave comments, you know, people leave comments to me and I'm like, you know, I don't care about what you believe. I'm not asking you. Like, I don't go to people, the majority of people, and say, oh, what do you believe? Because I'd be like, oh, that was a waste of my time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> these people are worthless in terms of their understanding of what's going on in reality, right? I mean, they're, you know, limited, even more so than me. You know, like, they have a, their beliefs are, you know, limited by their own spiritual immaturity or whatever it is, right? And, you know, judging other people's beliefs and getting into other people's beliefs or being offended by what other people believe is only going to make you miserable. You know, people can believe whatever they want. I don't want to control over other people's inner world because everyone has to choose to come to God and connect to the divinity within them. And whatever has to happen for that to happen, that's between them and God. Like, I can't make that happen for them. Like, you know, I can offer them my knowledge and my, you know, services in terms of the gratefulness meditation that we do. But other than that, you know, I don't have anything. Like, you know, I, I don't have any... I know that I can't convince people to to invest in a, a spiritual journey and, you know, all of it. I, you know, I've done this enough to know that I can't change other people's beliefs and I don't want to because I don't want that responsibility. But Don Levin, no, you're in trouble. You're in trouble, Elon. Maybe you wouldn't get in trouble so much if you if you moderated your, your content, you know, in yourself. I mean, just, it's just embarrassing, Don. Okay, so I ran some errands and went to the chiropractor, a few things here. Let's go back a little bit to what was happening here before I left. Content moderation on the platform that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great, great replacement theory as it relates to- I don't to have to answer these questions. Great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that- I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So you don't think you do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that there possibly. Was, I could care less. It, you don't you don't care? No, I don't. Why care. not? I don't think people should care what the media thinks about them. They're e terrible judges of character. Even <laughs> so, Don Lemon, you got canceled, and you didn't care what they said. You didn't give them back their twenty-four million dollars and tell them they were right and you were wrong. You said that you felt restricted at CNN. You felt like you couldn't express yourself. You felt like you were put into a box. The same thing with Chris Cuomo's. When both of you guys got fired for cause and you still got paid, right? You got your, I mean, millions of dollars you don't deserve because you suck at your job. And you're saying to Elon Musk that he should listen to critics, but you shouldn't, right? <laughs> that every right-wing person that gets canceled or any Donald Trump supporter is wrong and you guys are right. I mean, it's just, or any truth or anybody who doesn't believe in the official story. And why do we care what you guys think? You're wrong all the time. You're liars. You're bad people. We don't respect you. We mock you, make fun of you, and we think that you guys are, I mean, just in general, the whole media and the whole establishment is bringing humanity down, right? <laughs> you know, we're all contributing. It's not your, all, all your fault, but you guys are leading the way, right? Even someone who has one of the biggest social media and biggest information platforms in the world, you don't think, you don't care, you don't think that there's, you have any x.com or you have any responsibility to the truth or moderating? What do you mean the truth? The truth is, you see it, this is the issue here, right? This is, he showed this part before. Responsibility to the truth. CNN is the opposite of truth. MSNBC and Fox and all news networks are the opposite of truth. There is some truth that they report, but their general worldview, the power system that's behind them, and the way that they report things, and the things that they lie about or don't say, or criticize or take down, or they get information from the intelligence community or the government or their handlers or the corporate the corporate uh, the corptocracy that supports them, their advertisers all of it, and they create this worldview that's far from factual. And so they are the opposite of the truth. 
See, the opposite of the truth is not lying. That's part of it. But it's also creating a paradigm, creating a reality where there's truth mixed with lies. See, if you just lie, you inevitably get caught and you inevitably are seen as a liar. But if you mix truth with lies, then you're really the opposite of the truth because people believe you at times and you're right about some things and then people trust you and that's even more dangerous, right? Out and out lying is better than mixing lies with truth purposefully to create an illusion and move people in a direction, right? So you can be honest about a problem and then present solutions that have some sprinkled truth in it. But then at the end of the day, there's, you know, an agenda that you're pushing that's deceptive and evil and abusive, right? The platform? Uh, you're conflating the truth with the, with the media, and I think the media is uh, not truthful. Well, not with just the, the media. I mean, just the truth in general. I, I, I care about the truth very much. That's why we have, for example, community, community notes on the YEC system, um, where uh, in order for community note to surface and uh, provide corrective information about what somebody posts, and, and my posts are equally subject to this. My, I've been a community noted many times. Um, the in order for, for a community note to surface, uh, people who have historically disagreed must agree in order for a community note to surface. And all of the code for community notes is open source. All of the data is open source, so you can completely recreate it from scratch. The way to build trust is transparency. I have noticed community notes. I think that you are right about that, and I do think community notes are helpful. I think any yeah. type of content moderation, I do think that's helpful. Content moderation is ridiculous. It's ridiculous because you have access, every person has access to, uh, you know, the web of information. I mean, the collective computer, uh, you know, the storage and the, you know, platforms and all the available data that's out there, the collective computer data. And now, of course, with AI bots and all these other things, everyone has the ability to go research for themselves. The problem is people are lazy, stupid, and they they don't want to think for themselves. And so they just want other people to tell them and they want people to tell them something they agree with. And that's always going to be the case. So no community codes, no community notes, no moderation, no any of this stuff's going to change that. It's that people suck. And that everything, you know, everyone's a liar and illusion and lying is a part of human life to such an extent that there's more lies than people telling the truth. I would think that collectively in terms of human behavior and certainly the establishment, you are lied to more than you are told the truth, the unadulterated truth. When somebody actually knows the truth, and for most people, they don't even remember, or, you know, they've lost the truth. We've lost the truth in the sea of lies. I talked about that in an earlier video. And so this is just stupid, right? These guys, you know, they, what they want is to control the alternative opinions that they can't voice in establishment media because they have such a, a small bandwidth of information they're allowed, allowed to cover, right? There's, you know, there's all this data out there and all these different uh, versions of reality or versions of the truth or versions of, of um, you know, the truth is always one, but in terms of perception and in terms of people's opinions, in terms of the diverse understanding of reality, there's so many levels of this kind of... Um, you know, data out there. But the mainstream media has a very narrow bandwidth, which is backed by government talking points, political talking points, corporate talking points, and the intelligence community and all these other, you know, media and all these gatekeepers, that they're very limited in what they can say. So they're getting killed by people who can just go out and tell you the truth, right? And these guys have always wanted to, you know, the CNNs and the Establishment people have always wanted to rein that in, right? You recently called content moderation, though, a digital chastity belt. Do you think that, do you, you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law and we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown. Uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Um, the I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting your thumb on the scale. See, open sourcing the algorithm is a big thing, right? Because all these other platforms use 
you know, they game the system. YouTube came out and kind of said what they were going to do, but they don't open source their algorithm, right? They, you know, they said that they were going to only share or they were only going to promote what they called authoritarian news, which is CNN and MSNBC, which nobody wants to watch on YouTube. People don't, people don't go to YouTube to watch that stuff unless there's some specific thing they want to watch. But for the most part, they go to YouTube or some of these other social media platforms to watch something else, right? But here, um, you know, this um, idea that if you suppress hate speech or any of these things that you consider dangerous, it just incubates, right? If people don't feel that they can express things, and I'm not, um, you know, I'm not saying hate speech is a good thing and they should, you know, people should, in, in, you know, hate is a bad thing. It's a bad thing for you personally. It's a bad thing to let hate into your system. I've talked about that. Your hate is your hate and you have to remove your own hate. The object of your hate is whatever that is, right? But the hate is yours and the hate makes you feel bad. I've talked about this in so many videos. But in terms of suppressing things, it only makes things worse. Whenever you suppress things, especially that are volatile in nature, when you express things that make people angry and hateful, it just incubates and gets worse and is driven underground. And then it comes out in some you know, negative form. And that's what they're pushing for. That's what they want, right? You know, when people express things like this, you at least get a sense. I mean, the way that the spy system works, then you can identify people who have these views. If you think things are legitimate hate speech, allowing people to post things on the internet, you then can identify those people with your spy network. And so, you know, come on, like, what are you, what are you even talking about? Like, it doesn't serve those people well for posting things like that, right? Because they get labeled, demonized, and they get tagged, and they get put in groups and categories, and they're watched by the government, right? Uh, we don't want to put out that on the scale. It doesn't concern you that hate speech has gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen says it went down. The, the study from the Institute of Strategic Dialogue found that anti-Semitic tweets doubled from June 22 to February 2023. One study reported that as many as 86% of the posts reported for hateful content remained up after being reported. Hate speech on the platform is up. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts but not count the number of views. So what matters is was that uh, post given high visibility or what did, did like one person see it? Uh, and if you look at the number of views of how, well, how how many, how many times was his content viewed on our platform? It is down substantially. Yeah. Well, that so that's important, Dom. Acknowledge, Don, acknowledge that because posting isn't the same as people seeing it, right? Like, you know, if something is posted and there's very few or, or no views, views are more important than posts, right? Because it's, you're saying it's being, is, you know, that there are things being posted, but if people aren't seeing it, it doesn't matter. And he just said this. What are you going to react to that, Don? That's not was what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I'm going to show you this. And what do you mean that's not what the study shows? And Don, you, you can get a study that will tell you whatever you want. But this, this, this is, these are just a handful of extremely, you look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on X. And from your own content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Did you... Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but... <laughs> He's like pathetic. They're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters... You know, you guys said hateful things about anti-vaxxers. You yourself said this, Don, about anti-vaxxers. You know, in all of these mass shootings attributed social media to radicalizing. So, so Don, you love censorship is what you're saying? No, I don't love censorship. Then why, why are you asking? I believe in moderation, but I, I don't believe in censorship. Is a, it's a, moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. But don't you think free speech is one thing, right? Or uh, free speech is one thing. Not, you know, look, if something's not illegal, we're going to take it down. If it's not illegal, then we're putting our thumb on the scale and we're being censors. You're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech. I mean, you don't put out child pornography. That's not it's illegal. That some people would say that's considered censorship. I'm just saying you. <laughs> okay, he had a litmus test, John, which is illegal stuff. 
And what he's saying there by putting his thumb on the scale is he's saying we're judging this to be something bad, um, you know, like when it's just based on your perception. So if it's a left-leaning, um, you know, organization, which all these other ones are, they're going to put their thumb on the scale and they are going to censor things that are right-wing or truth-oriented and promote things that are maybe hateful from your side, right? And they're going to say, well, these people get to express their hate of this group or that group, but these people don't, right? And then it's all this, you know, I mean, it's just all subjective. I mean, it's just, you know, either way, Don sucks. Like, he's just horrible at this job. You No, I literally, Don, you know, I, I literally said, if, if something is legal, okay, we will obviously remove it. Okay. But if it is not legal, the, the, the laws in this country were, are, are put forward by the citizens. We're a democracy. Uh, if those laws are put in place uh, by, the, by the people, we adhere to those laws. Okay, and I agree. We adhere agree. to the laws of, of, okay. of others. If you go beyond the law, you're actually going beyond the will of the people. Okay, agreed. Uh, with the law. <laughs> the law thing. But if you are doing something that promotes hate and violence and ultimately leads to killing, you don't feel there's, you have any responsibility not to do The American government kills more people than anybody. Joe Biden uh, droned eight kids in Afghanistan. And you said nothing about it, at least as far as I know. CNN, I mean, it was barely reported. And now all the killing that's going on in Israel. And, you know, maybe you're kind of against that, whatever it is. But governments kill people all the time. And there's lots of things that create violence and hate and these things, right? And so you're making it sound like he's responsible. You know, it's only the people you want to be responsible or accountable, which is, oh, conspiracy theorists are promoting hate and violence. No, we're just saying that, again, it's not conspiracy theorists, it's truthers or people seeking the truth. We're saying that you're lying to us and the official story is a lie, which is true. And so the truth is somehow dangerous. Is that what you're saying? Right? That's what CNN and Don Lemon's position was before. To do that? Uh, when, when, when the people who I are doing think, it admittedly are saying those articles all the time that lead to, to violence and killing. Um, don't they? Shouldn't they? Like you're applying a differential standard to... But uh, that, would never, that would never be in mainstream media. These types of images, that type of language. Yeah, because mainstream media sucks. You're saying mainstream media is the standard and it's not. You got fired from mainstream media and you didn't agree with your firing. You got canceled. You got, you know, I mean, all of it, right? Those things would never be, we'd never, in main, when I was in mainstream media, we'd never promote things that um, would, would be anti-Semitic. We would never promote, promote things, things that, that would. Anti-Semitic either. Did you, did, you, did you not see those? You said promote. You th if content is on the platform, that doesn't mean we promote it. But that wouldn't be on a, on a platform for mainstream media at all. But that's why people don't go to mainstream media. Because you, mainstream media is limited, like I said. Like, you know, you want everything to be like mainstream media. You want everything to suck. The reason that people like alternative media is because there's all these interesting things that are said and, and better research and more honest people and smarter content. That's why people are leaving the news and going to mainstream media for their news. The hate speech and the, you know, the remedial stuff that's out there, that's for a certain segment of the population that, you know, is going to post those things. It's like anything else. If you open something up, you're going to get crap. If you allow people to get involved, there's going to be different levels. There's going to be higher levels of people who are artistic and smart and, you know, post quality content. And then there's going to be all these lower levels of people who are you know, lower level of consciousness and they're putting out garbage, right? You know, no one's saying that you should be censored for sucking. Like, you're, you suck at this, Don. It's amazing you had a job at all. Like, you just absolutely suck. This is bad interviewing skills. It's bad content. It's remedial thought. I mean, it's, uh, I looked up Elon Musk's IQ is reportedly 155. I think it was a documentary. It said something like 180. But he's obviously one of these, you know, really high IQ people. And usually those people are remedial in, like, heart level, like feeling love and, you know, some of these other things, right? You know, oftentimes people who are over, you know, they are overdeveloped in one of these areas lack some balance in the emotional side or spiritual side or something, right? 
but he's clearly perceptive and smart. And Don Lemons is borderline, you know, double-digit IQ type person. Like, he's just not smart. He's not conscious, right? And we're not saying you should be censored for sucking. Like, it's good. You know, you go go out there and suck as much as you want, Don, right? And you're good at it. <laughs> no, but you can think of... That, that's because the mainstream media is has, like, whatever, 20 articles a day. Uh, we have 500 million posts today. Okay, understood. 500 million. Does it bother you? How do you feel about that when you see it? I obviously disagree with that. I think it's not, it's not good at all. It's terrible. But you don't want to get rid of it on the platform, or at least moderate it. The rules, the, you're, you're, what, what you're suggesting is censorship that goes beyond well, the law. It's, and what I'm saying is, uh, I... See, um, you're frustrated, Don, because he's not giving you the answer that you think you deserve, and you're just not smart, right? Like, he's saying that, you know, if you're going to allow people to post things, you don't choose what's... Like, you're choosing winners and losers. CNN and all these other... Um, these uh, remedial news, mainstream media outlets put pressure on YouTube and Facebook to suck more and be censored as did the Democratic Party because they were against freedom of speech, right? They pressured their competition to stop being better than them, right? And what they wanted to do was limit their competition to the same narrow bandwidth that they have to, you know, post on, that they have to cover. And, you know, even with that, you guys still suck. Like, even if the content's the same, you guys are still worse. <laughs> you know, like, you're unwatchable, right? That we, I guess, have a disagreement because I do not believe in censorship that goes beyond the law, and you do. We have a difference of opinion in that regard. I understand that. But these are your own rules on your own platform. This, these go against the, the rules on your platform. That's why I'm asking you. If you, had, if you said, listen, we allow everything, but that's not what your content rules say. And that's why I'm asking you, why no. are they still there? The, your own content policy. That's why I'm asking you that, not because... Which part of our content policy says that we, have, we, we, we should delete these, these, these things? Your content policy talks about hate speech. Yes, we don't promote hate speech, hate speech. And so you don't consider that hate speech? I guess you're not understanding what I'm saying. No, he's not, because he's a dope. Uh, let, me, let me tell you, Don, what he's saying, even though you're not going to understand me either. <laughs> he's saying that promoting something is using the, their algorithms are pushing it out and recommending it to people whereas somebody just posting something it just dies a miserable death so he doesn't delete things he just doesn't promote them also they limit the audience on on facebook on, uh, on twitter on x like they limit it to the audience of people who are interested in these things and so they don't promote lots of things that you consider controversial and that's the difference. So that's what his bylaws say. You don't understand. Like, it's just, he's just so dumb, right? There's, 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 if, if, if there's, you, you can find, like, at, at, you can sign up right now and, and, and do a, a hundred things that are hateful. Um, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. So, the, you can. <laughs> that was freaking wonderful. You, you can find, like, at, at, you can sign up right now and, and, and do a, a hundred things that are hateful. Um, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. So, the, you, can, you can think of X as being... <laughs> he just doesn't understand. It's much like the internet. It's not some, t it's some tiny publication with, like, 20 articles a day. It's 500 million. Uh, but everyone has the opportunity to read it, Elon. No, they don't, because it's impossible to find stuff. Like, you guys went and looked for these things. And you guys are, you know, whatever you're doing, and you're subscribing to these groups, you probably are giving them more views than their actual fan base. Those of us who are on social media who have been shadow banned by our platform, we know how hard it is for people to find our content. You know, people are literally searching the name of my YouTube channel and not finding, not being recommended my page my you know my my channel and so it's really hard to find things when it's not promoted you don't understand that don because you were on cnn and they just did everything for you all you had to do was go out there and suck right <laughs> like, you, like you didn't have to do all the things that the rest of us have to do to to uh put on our you know content you just go out there and suck and go home right and so <laughs> 
It's not just that you don't have the opportunity to read the internet. Are you suggesting we should shut down the internet? No, but, but you don't own the internet. I'm asking you about you and your responsibility and your platform. And I, I, so I see how you feel now. You don't agree. We don't agree on this. Yes, yeah, so you want censorship and I don't. No, I don't want censorship at Yes, all. you do. No, I want responsibility. I think there's, I think- That's censorship, Don. Don. There. You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship- want censorship. <laughs> He's crushing him. Like he, you know, Don Lemon made it sound like he crushed Elon in this interview. And Elon's just owning the guy. I'm so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. It's not true. I think that there's right and wrong. And, and I think that- you want censorship. And I, and who, who decides who's right and wrong? You mean the left is right and the right is wrong? Is that how it is, Don? Like, you get to decide what's right and what's wrong? Is what I said about beliefs. Like, you can't legislate other people's beliefs, whatever they might be. And I think that when you have a platform that's as big as yours and as powerful as yours and as influential as yours, and you are a person who, of consequence to the world with what you do, that there is a certain responsibility that goes along with what you have on your platform and what you put out to the world, and I, I think that's important. You don't see that responsibility. Um, I think the... You're saying that people can't make up their own minds and do their own thing, which is, you know, that's not only censorship, but you're controlling people in a way, saying that you're so much smarter and better than them, when you're clearly not, right? And what the internet does is it allow people to express themselves. And when those express it, the, the expressions goes against the official story, you guys all try to silence it, which shows you that this isn't really a free speech country, it's a control country. They allow you free speech as long as you um, are within the, the narrow bandwidth of the official story, right? We have a responsibility to uh, adhere to the law, um, and if people want the law changed, they should talk to, the elector, talk to their elected representative and get the law changed, and then we will adhere to the law. Okay. But if you want us to go beyond the law, that is, that is uh, us deciding to be censors. So, and I'm against censorship. I'm, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Yeah. And freedom of speech only is relevant when people you don't like say things you don't like. Otherwise, it has no meaning. But I, I do think that there, are, there should be guardrails. Wait, to, to freedom of speech? So you're, not against, you're against the First Amendment then, right, Don? And I believe in free speech as much as you. I would no, you don't, because you just said guardrails. <laughs> you literally just said guardrails. <laughs> right I, I, don't, I, I don't disagree. I don't agree with um, a lot of what you put out on social media, but I will fight for your right to be able to say it. Right. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, Elon, now he knows that he's like, he's like oh my God, I, I'm almost, I almost went in business with this guy. Listen, let's talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, all right? That's been a target of yours lately on X. You, uh, on, there was a repost of Ben Shapiro that you claim that DEI is killing people. Specifically, you point to medicine. You claim that DEI programs are putting people at risk. I just can't watch this whole thing. Um, let's just move forward to... Okay. Um, we'll listen to the end of that segment. This is about... Um, standards. Just so you know, 5% of pilots are female, 4% are black. So you're, you know, you're talking about this widespread takeover of minorities and women when that's not actually true. I'm not and saying there's a widespread are, takeover. Well, you're saying that the standards are being lowered because of certain people. Um, and you, how do you, you don't believe in DEI, right? Do you not believe diverse in diversity, equity, and inclusion? I think we should be uh, treat people uh, according to their skills uh, and their integrity, and that's it. Do you know that studies show? Studies show. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can look them up. But, so, studies show. So your reaction to studies show and I understand, right? Because I always like to say, I always like to point to an exact uh, study, right? Sure. Something that is factual. It's the same thing when you talk about, well... It's only factual if it's factual. Because a scientist can be bought, and they are, and studies can be gamed, and they can, you know, they can warp the, they can warp the data collection process or and the interpretation of the data. We know this has happened over, over and again. You can't call a study fact. You can't call science fact because scientists can be bought. Psychologists can be bought. Any number of these people along the process can be compromised. 
let's see what the replies are on Twitter or on X. Yeah, they'll slap you about it. So I feel, the same, I feel the same way about that. But this is what studies have shown, and people will reply and they'll say that companies with more diversity and their leadership teams have reported higher innovation rates than those in, with, a lower, um, with lower diversity or low diversity. And they, they're better companies. And they <laughs> um, you know, I think, I don't agree with what Elon Musk is doing. But I think his companies are pretty innovative and he's been very successful, right? Like that's why he was able to buy X, you know, <laughs> Twitter. And that's why he was able to do all these things he's doing. He's been very successful. So what are you even talking about, right? You're talking about these other companies are more successful than his. He was the richest man in the world for a while. I mean, whatever, you know, that's the official narrative. <laughs> they make more money. This whole so you're saying that he, he has a diversity and inclusion if the companies that are successful have it and he has one of the most successful companies right well idea about dei if you go woke or whatever you go broke that's not necessarily true people with diverse leadership teams and diverse wait diversity and woke don't go hand in hand being woke it means if you go woke you're going to be unhirable or you'll be such a nightmare to work with no one's going to want to be with you or work with you right um that's what that saying means but being woke and diversity aren't the same thing you can have diversity without any of the people being woke or at least woke in the term the way the term is being used now right like he just doesn't understand things um workers make more money and more innovative um like i said my view is that the, the only basis for promoting somebody should be uh their skills, talents, and uh, their integrity, and that's it. I want to ask you about, there's a, there's a federal government, uh, EEOC, is, they are also currently involved in a lawsuit against Tesla that alleges that there's a history of widespread racial harassment against black Tesla employees, as well as a pattern of retaliation for speaking out. What do you say to that? <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> uh, well, uh, there's, I, I don't believe that is, that is true. Um, I think we've got a very good, uh, uh, like if, if you walk around the, the, te the Tesla Fremont uh, plant, I think it's a very good atmosphere. Um, in fact, I, I practically lived there for three years trying to make the production work. Were you uh, aware if you lived there, were you aware of such behavior? I never saw it. So you're saying that this is not true, it's not happening? Well. I mean, there's over 20,000 people. So you say, like, oh, if, if there's over 20,000 people in one building, um, well, is everyone going to be... You know, you're not being honest about the fact that you guys are constantly attacking this guy because he's allowing freedom for, of speech on his platform. Ever since Elon took over Twitter and, you know, there was no longer censorship of the media, the media has been all over him. Censor, censorship on the platform, the media has been all over him. And, I, you know, like I said... This guy's more of a supervillain than Don Lemons. Like, I don't agree with a lot of things this guy's doing. But, you know, you can see that somebody who does what he's doing and what does what Donald Trump is doing, or any number of people, there's a different standard, and they look for any little bit of dirt on the person. And they say, well, this is happening here in your business here, and they try to label the person as this or that or the other thing, racist in this case, right? Let's move forward a little bit here continues on in this country that's and that's undeniable well if, if if we keep talking about it non-stop it will never go away if we keep making that the central thing it will never go away well why do you believe that i think i'm just making a simple statement of fact um so <laughs> why do you believe that? like his follow-up questions and his his ability to have a conversation is just I mean, I'm not a social person. And this is like this is so painful to watch somebody be this bad at something. I mean, his job is to do this. <laughs> I think I think we want to get away from making everything a race or a gender or whatever issue, and just treat people like individuals. Do you have any desire to understand what many people of color and even trans people um, how they feel about this country and how they're treated? In this country, if they if they say and they believe that they are treated a certain way in this country, why don't you believe them? Do you 
want to learn what it's like to be a so-called conspiracy theorist or an anti-vaxxer that you said well let's play the, the meme again here remember when you said this don i think we have to stop coddling people when it comes to this and the vaccine saying oh you can't shame them you can't call them stupid you can't call them silly again yes they are the people who ate it and abetted trump are stupid because they believed his big lie the people who are not getting vaccines who are believing the lies on the internet instead of science it's time to start shaming them what else or leave them behind Be because they are keeping the majority of americans behind and so um you know like it's just like anything else you don't care about people that you want to get rid of the people that you disagree with and so it's stupid to say that because every every group has a sob story every group has a complaint about the way their demographic is being treated every dem every person that dem uh, that identifies as a demographic has a complaint i don't view myself as a victim i you know because i believe everything comes from god and um even though i'm censored and i'm you know, every time i turn on the tv or i you know post anything on social media my opinion is either being censored or i'm being told i'm wrong by a clown like this right and so i could claim to be a victim we all could because of our belief system we are being targeted every time they talk about people like us they call us crazy conspiracy theorists they call us dangerous they even imply that we're terrorists right and so do you care about us no you don't so in fact you're against us and you verbalize at every chance you get which is your right and you know i don't mind you doing it i enjoy mocking these guys and i'm glad they're on the other side because they suck so bad like i'm glad that all these people who are on cnn and these politicians and all these people because they're you know i wouldn't want them on my team right you, you, you cannot have a situation where, where someone is, is a self-described victim and, and, they, and they just get to be that because that's how they feel. I think that, that... That's a good point, Don. That does happen in some... In all cases. You know, um, it's... Um, well, let me... I'll read that... Um, I'll read that um, quote here. So I talk about victim consciousness and the victim stance all the time. And this is one of my favorite quotes about that. It says, The victim's stance is a powerful one. The victim is always morally right, neither responsible nor accountable, and forget, forever entitled to sympathy. And, you know, all that that implies. Cases, but not all cases. And I think that not understanding the history of the country, I think, is, um, is a, a real shame. Look, I've had, we should understand I've had incredible history opportunities and other countries. I've had incredible opportunities as a person of color. Right. But I've also you been did it very well. But I've also been discriminated against. And I know that I have. And I know that that's real. And for someone It's real for everybody. I mean, it's real for ugly people. It's real for people overweight. It's it's real for people with disabilities. It's real uh, it's real for people with obnoxious personalities. It's real for a-holes, right? You know, a-holes are discriminated against. You know, anybody can claim that there are people that don't like them and are against them, either based on their appearance, based on who they are, and where they go, right? A person who is discriminated against in one area can be accepted in another area based on the, the power structure that's in that state or that town or that city. or what. It's just, you know, the constant drone of victim consciousness that we have. You know, anybody who thinks they're a victim is going to fail in life because they're constantly going to believe that they're set up to fail. The system's rigged against all of us to some extent, but in terms of financial success, America, you know, at least how it used to be, you'd be able to become a wealthy person. Now, it's not so much the younger generation, and, you know, that's just the way it's going to be. But, I mean, in terms of everything, you're always going to have people that are against you for one reason or another, right? You know, you know this constant stream of victim consciousness, which I've talked about before. To say that that isn't happening, I should not... I should just move forward and not think about that and ignore the past is insulting. I'm not saying... You know, it's not insulting. You're taking that as an insult. No one's saying... He didn't say that anyway, but, you know, it's just... Like, this is what you want other people to see your point of view and feel bad for you, but you don't feel bad for anti-vaxxers. You don't feel bad for people you call conspiracy theorists 
or any number of people. You don't feel bad for Trump supporters. So, you know, they all have a sob story, right? <laughs> Everybody's got one. Dang it. Don, you keep putting words in my mouth. I'm not saying it's... it's I didn't say that you said it. I'm saying that we want to... We, we, as, we as a country should move beyond the questions of, of, of race and gender. So up to this point, Elon has been much better than Don Lemon's. And he's answered his questions thoughtfully. This is one of be Elon's better interviews. The guy's creepy. He's kind of off. He's kind of weird. But he's been much more concise. Other interviews, you know, I mean, he gets a little bit weirder. He's been very sharp in this interview, right? And he's not mad. And he's not, you know, he's talking to a guy who just doesn't understand his answers, which is really frustrating. When you talk to somebody and they can't understand your answers because they just don't have the mental capacity and the consciousness level and the IQ to do that. And he's explained this stuff over and over again, the same questions in a different format. And it's frustrating just talking to Don Lemon and listening to him. He's a life sucking, you know, dope out there, right? And, you know, even with that, Elon Musk is keeping his cool. So this idea that Don Lemon pissed him off by this takedown interview that Don Lemon said, Elon Musk is mad at me. No, he realized how bad you suck. He realized that he'd be throwing away his money you know, by, you know, you're not going to win an audience. You got fired from CNN because you couldn't bring in an audience there. You're not going to bring an audience in on an X, not any substantial audience that's going to make any money for him or the platform. Sure. And we should treat people like individuals and, and base our opinions on them, on the, you know, uh, their, their uh, their, their, their character and their skills. I don't think that anyone will disagree with that. Exactly. All I'm saying is that that's not happening and is not equal for everyone. That <laughs> but that's not his job to fix that, Don. Like he's, he's not God, right? What do you want him to do? People suck. I mean, that's what life is about. Like things aren't, well, don't appear to be fair. But there is a plan and there is divinity and you believe in God, then there is some order to things. Either it's chaos or, it's, or, or there's a plan. Either there's God or it's chaos. If it's chaos, then, you know, then what are you going to complain about? You can't complain about chaos. You can't complain about something that has no order, that has no, you know, fairness in it. And if it's all coming from God, then there's a plan here and everybody's held accountable. That those opportunities don't happen for everyone. And I am a living example that they don't. I know. What do you mean? Like, you suck at your job. And I, I wonder why they hired you in the first place. I don't know if you were always this stupid, but you are now. And they kept you around, and you were being overpaid for underperforming. And you weren't getting the ratings that you needed. You were getting slaughtered by your competition. And they moved you to the morning show where you pissed everybody off, you mistreated your co coworkers, and you were fired for cause for saying things that they felt their, their woke feminist agenda didn't align with your belief system. And you got fired for that. You walked away with $24 million for sucking. How many people get fired because they suck and they walk away with $24 million in compensation in a network that has to lay people off and fire them because they suck and they're running out of money because they're being destroyed by social media because nobody wants to watch it anymore? You're a living example of somebody who got compensated and was given a position he didn't deserve based on his ability to do the job. You had opportunities you shouldn't have, right? And it might have been based in the fact that you're gay or you're black or something like that. I don't know. But whatever reason they hired you, you didn't deserve the job, right? And I'm not talking about a network that was filled with competent people. I mean, look at the people, Jake Droopy Dog Topper and Wolf Blitzer and, and Cuomo's. And I mean, like, you know, CNN has produced all sucky people. I don't know if there's anybody over at CNN that I consider good at their job, right? Maybe they're a little bit more competent than you, but nobody's, they're, none of them are really watchable. And they're not funny, they're not interesting, they're just, you know, bad, bad news people, right? And you are like the, the bottom of the heap there. Know that they don't because I live it. What do you mean you live it? You think you got fired? You, you didn't get enough? What, what position did, did you not, not get that you deserve, right? You've been incredibly successful. I have been, and in spite of it all. But I, in spite of it all, <laughs> in spite of me sucking <laughs> at my job. But I am. I know what I know. I've experienced what I've experienced. You haven't done that. And oh, you just know so much more. 
well, you sucked on. Like, you still don't get it. Like, you've demanded you were going to get a $5 million bonus you wanted and an $8 million salary, and you wanted, a, you know, stock options and a Tesla truck that they still can't even get out. You know, they still isn't, uh, they're still, you know, back ordered. <laughs> you wanted all those things. You think you're better than you are. You're horrible at your job. You got fired for CNN because you couldn't bring an audience in. Nobody likes you, and you just appear stupid, right? You keep on getting owned by your, by people who interview you, or you interview, because you suck at your job, and you just don't get it. Like, you're not good at this. You're lucky that you, you have this opportunity now. You shouldn't get any opportunity after how bad you sucked at CNN. This was his, what was the other jobs that you weren't offered because you sucked? This is your last chance and this is your new boss, and you're hoping that this guy pays you all this money, and you just demonstrated to him why he shouldn't. <laughs> and I cannot, um, I don't know what it's like to be from South Africa. I don't know what it's like to be a white man. I don't know what it's like to be a woman. I don't know what it's like to be a Latino mm -hmm. person. I don't know. This is many different. <laughs> know that, so I wouldn't speak for them and just say. But you do know what it's like to suck at your job, right? <laughs> you need to move on. That's not for me to say. I, maybe I believe that the country, it would be great if the country could live up to that ideal. You think that everyone has the same opportunities in America, regardless of their background and ethnicity. Do you agree? You, no, I don't think everyone has the same opportunities. Okay. So, um, wow, Don, like this, again. <laughs> when you talk about, let's talk about trans rights. When you decided to, um, to talk about the okay, let's move forward a little bit here towards the end, and right um, and their integrity, and you start focusing instead on gender and race and other things that are different from that. Um, I think uh, the world wine virus is fundamentally racist, fundamentally sexist, and fundamentally evil. Okay, and uh, we've got a little bit more time, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You choose your question. Okay, so <laughs> okay, thank you for that, but uh, you. Uh, I would appreciate you answering these. I think it's important that we're doing this. I think it's important to the to world, the world, to hear this special. Okay, you know he's tired of re-answering these questions, and you keep on asking the same question again, hoping he'll agree with you, right? Like you're not providing any context or argument. You have a few studies and a point of view he clearly doesn't agree with, right? That I don't know anybody who could really agree with you on anything because you just don't articulate things in a way that people would be um, agree with your position like you suck at it and I've seen him suck for years because I've covered this guy I mean him and Chris Cuomo like I used to have this thing called the douche off you know and I, I grade them on points who is more douchey and they were both pretty douchey <laughs> and they're both like just so out of touch and they, they both lack the ability to self observe so what's going on uh, in our country the reason I ask you, looks, and there are a whole lot of things that people maybe uh, have questions about when it comes to transgender people. Even people who are part of the LGBTQ sure. plus community have, have questions about that. But if you are a free speech absolutist, right, um, and that is part of the First Amendment, also the freedom of expression falls under that First Amendment as well. So why can't people choose to identify with the gender that they feel comfortable with or with a, use a pronoun? Isn't that part of freedom of expression? Uh, I guess, though, that they can, they can ask others to do whatever they feel. They can, they can ask others to do anything. What, it, it's a different question whether they, whether they mandate that others do right. that thing. Okay. Let's, let's talk more about free speech and parameters. Yeah, they're mandating, right, Don? We admit that's right. Advertisers, right? Because all, all this controversy, I, I believe, as you know, has made um, X less appealing to advertisers. About half of them have left the platform. You call advertisers that left X. Uh, dot com. He said there were oppressors. You've even gone as far as saying it publicly that they can go f themselves or go fuck themselves. Advertise if they're, they're going to force censorship on the, on the company uh, before advertising, then uh, obviously I find that unacceptable. You find it unacceptable. Why is that not a form of, of free speech? They are free to advertise. Oh my God! Do you not understand that? It's the opposite of free speech. You dope. If an advertiser says to you. I don't want you to say this or I, I don't want to advertise here if you allow this content or that content. They're using money to buy censorship. 
they're using their influence and power of their advertising dollars as a way to censor you, right? It's clear censorship, Don. Oh, my God. Like <laughs> Guys, where they want, they're not beholden to, they're not yeah. obligated to advertise not on the next.com. Right. So how is that not free speech? What? The, they, they, that's, whereas the other platforms will censor on behalf of, of advertisers, the X platform will not. Okay. So, but you think it's, uh, you don't think it's okay for them not to advertise with or have their content or their advertisement next to something that is anti-Semitic or... That is a different question. Uh, you, you, we, we, there's, there's, you can absolutely choose where, next to which content do you want your advertising to appear. Absolutely, of course. Mm -hmm. And we do, we have, I think, very good ad placement controls in this regard. Yeah. So you said if they kill the company, it's them. But doesn't the buck stop with you? I mean, you're on I have to say, I, I, choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. Okay, but so... Is this the same, question you want to ask? The same question is, you said, you said that they are... Just, you keep on coming back to censorship, and you your questions, I mean... <laughs> Elon Musk actually did a great job of not like getting so frustrated and walking out because of dealing with somebody who's so limited. He's like, there's nobody home, right? Killing the company, but you're the head of the company. The buck doesn't stop with you? I acquired X in order to preserve freedom of speech in America, the First Amendment. And I'm gonna to stick to that. And if that means making less money, so be it. So I have to be, listen, I, I'm just being honest, right? I'm not trying to, like... No, you're not. You're just being stupid, right? <laughs> get you or anything. Yeah, you are. Come on. I was just surprised that you would blame other people for killing the company. I mean, you're the... I mean, when you say the buck stops with the President of the United States, regardless of what happens, right? So what you're saying is... Um, so there's a couple of things here. You want one of his cars. You want money from him and you want stock options which means you know he's successful and you have faith in this platform you want to you have no other options but you could go on any platform you could have your own youtube channel and run you know youtube's crappy ads right and deal with that you can go on whatever it is whatever other platforms are available the multifarious platforms where video content is there nobody wants to hire you and this guy was going to give you money. And you're coming on his platform and you're saying that he's killing his company by not allowing advertise to dictate his policies, which is, you know, nobody wants to do that, right? You yourself complained about CNN censoring you, and that's often because of their advertisers, their limitation of mainstream media, right? He just sucks so bad. I mean, let's wrap this thing up here. It's almost over. So I... Why would, the, why would that question upset you? You seem upset by it, are you? I think you're... And I'm not trying to upset you. The way, well, you are upsetting me because the way you're phrasing the questions, I think, is, is not cogent. Um, it's not uh, what? Not cogent. Cogent. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, the... If, 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 if given a choice where an advertiser is saying, like, you have to censor all this content on the, on the platform, irrespective of where their advertising appears, uh, then our answer will be like, look, you, you, you can choose where you want your advertising, what you want your advertising to appear next to, but you can't insist on censorship of the entire platform. And if you insist on censorship of the entire platform, even where your advertising doesn't appear, uh, then uh, obviously we will, we will not uh, want them as an advertiser. So what, what would you say to advertisers to, who have left the platform or who are considering coming back or not coming back? What would you like to say to them? Well, first of all, uh, almost all of our advertisers are coming back to the platform. So it's a very short list of advertisers who are not coming back to the platform. Um, and uh, our advertising revenue is rising rapidly. Uh, and our subscription revenue is rising rapidly. And I feel very optimistic about the future of the X platform. Okay. Listen, I'm not, I'm, honestly, I'm not meaning to offend you. You're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? Oh, my God. He was definitely less frustrated than I would have been, right? And when I meditate all the time, I mean, just the stupidity here. 
I was born that way. And I had a tough childhood. You did? So, yeah. How so? Um, right, Walter Isaacson goes into it in the book, and, and we only have a couple minutes left, so. All right. Too long to, to describe. Um, so the one or two questions I can do, and then we'll have to call it. I, okay, again, I don't mean to upset you. Why are you, you just. Don, you'll never be able to get it. <laughs> no, I, I, I have a whole room full of people waiting to meet with me. Okay. So we're just going over time. Okay. All right. I understand that. Um, so you, when you talk about, you said you were born that way. Is that, um, did you, you think that the way that you see the world has to do with your relationship with anyone, perhaps your, your father or some. <laughs> 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 he sucks so bad. That was great. What, in, in your family? <laughs> I think we're all affected by the people we grew, we grew up with. Um, my aspiration is to uh, do whatever it takes to extend, the, extend consciousness into the future. That's my goal, um, to make life multiplanetary as part of extending constant consciousness into the future. Has this, has, have the past few years and considering everything that's gone on, has it been difficult for you and your family life? It's been okay. So then how do you see your legacy, Elon? How, how do you see, how well, people see, see I, in the... First of all, I say that the, um, if I died knowing that I, that I did what was right or, or did my best to do what was right, and even if in the history books they said I did, did wrong, I would still feel okay about that. I care about the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. Um, I think we should view civilization uh, as tenuous, as fragile. Um, if, you, if you do study history broadly, you'll see that there's a rise in fault civilizations. They don't always go up. Um, so we should do everything we possibly can to preserve uh, and, and extend civilization as we know it. Yeah. Um, and improve it. Yeah. Um, to become more enlightened over time. And we uh, therefore want to address civilizational risks. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we don't have, for example, demographic collapse, which, which is the case in a lot of countries, uh, just very low birth rate. Um, we, we want to avoid, obviously avoid. Okay, so um, let's see if there's, let's just go to the very end here. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and fix them, uh, but I don't have a time machine. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I appreciate it. Like, thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so Elon Musk clearly was, um, well, let, I'll get into this in a voiceover. Let me show you this one clip here again. So remember when Don Lemon said this? Hi, everyone. Elon Musk is mad at me. And I just put out a statement about what happened between him, me, and the interview that he is apparently so upset about. I don't know what Elon Musk's emotional range is. He's a strange guy. But he wasn't angry, right? Like, this didn't make him angry because you didn't challenge him. You didn't get him. Like, it was just all the superficial fake news. Um, I mean, like, you were talking about tropes. This was like a a trope version of, you know, truther, eccentric, uh, billionaire who doesn't go along, whatever this thing was, right? That they talk about Elon Musk being somebody who doesn't do what they want him to do which is censor uh, tweeter. I mean, this is essentially what Don Lemon's whole thing was about. But it wasn't like you got him in some way that you could see through because it's just these, you know, these remedial mainstream media um, tropes, right? Like it's, a, you know, in terms of a, a human trope, these kind of stereotypical, oh, this is what, you know, just boilerplate, just what the mainstream media says about them. And when we don't listen to mainstream media, you guys don't get it. Like, we're not wanting anything to do with you. I mean, all of us. All of us who have disconnected from the mainstream media, you're only there for us to mock. You know, like, it's you only exist for us to look down on because you're on such a lower level of consciousness and you embarrass yourself every time you open your mouth and you just say these things that are just, you know written for you like you can't think for yourself at all you can't come up with original thought or not even just original thought just something other than your indoctrination and these things that are just said by people who uh you know use talking points and other things that 
don't have the ability to be a human being and be alive and be you know dynamic in some way you know don lemon is the kind of guy who he's in a conversation with a group and he doesn't get the jokes and he is the joke you know <laughs> but he doesn't get the joke he doesn't understand what's going on but he laughs and he looks at everybody and he's you know just so he knows when to stop laughing right <laughs> Because he doesn't really understand what's going on. He's just imitating everyone else because, you know, he doesn't get it, right? <laughs> and so him saying Elon Musk is bad at him, that wasn't anger. Like, I don't know what his emotional state is, but he certainly wasn't angry. You know, anger is when somebody says something gets under your skin in some way. But Don Lemon was just horrible at his job. And if he wanted $5 million in stock options, and yet he's criticizing Elon Musk's handling of of Twitter, you know, now X. And then he agreed with some of the changes when he explained it to him. But it was like Elon Musk was talking to a child, a, a stupid child, right? And just having a, you know, it's like some kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, character on a sitcom, like some stupid character on some sitcom that everybody just, you know, has to explain things to because he doesn't understand anything. Anyways, this was kind of epic in, in various ways. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano definitely pointing from the apocalypse and the ascension. I would have a blessed day and be grateful.